when there's a bad transition, bad, an bad animation, bad, bad things, it means it's bad design. It doesn't mean that design is here and developers here. So we are all together, and that's what we want to talk about today. So um, here's a couple of short things, just jumping in if you want to. Um, these are quick ones, so if you hear these things, these are all real quotes I've heard. And if you hear these in your project, do something before it's too late. Um, this design cannot be implemented. Um, then the developers need to learn to write better code. Um, um, this has been signed off already. That means that the customer has signed up something that we would still want to, to mean. That means that the customer interaction is a little bit off. Um, is this back final? Because I can't be bothered to change it. By your designers, our developers. Um, this is a real quote I heard um, in a company I joined and I quit the same day. Um, <laughs> uh, this is uh, from a designer uh, who I work with, who I greatly appreciate, but he told me that what I do is very easy. He knows what I do because he did HTML. Anyways, um, so this was just the foundation, what we want to, why we want to talk today about how we work together. We've been working together for five years, maybe? Yeah. Um, and we found a way to, to make things work um, without much friction. Um, so we're going to be talking to both devs and designers. Um, I recommend that you don't tune out for the other part, because you will learn from that one as well. Um, but before we go in, how many of us are developers? Okay. How many of us <laughs> are designers? Talk, you, can, you guys should talk to each other. You are the only ones. We can if you feel leader. scared, there's a support group back there. Uh, anyways, so yeah, that's so obviously we knew this was a dev conference, so it's quite dev focused. But the designer part Pierre is going to be talking about, you guys understand what the designers go through before we see what they, what they produce. Yep. So yeah, Divided We Fail, it's kind of a uh, title to, to show that um, both of us actually, we know it, we start from different approaches. Uh, we all know that sometimes we make even jokes about that. Um, and, um, but this is not a bad thing, I mean. Uh, we are trying to develop complex product or to solve complex problems. So it's really important, I think, that this is actually an upside. So we can tackle the problem from different perspectives in order to basically get the, the whole picture. Um, there are still cases in which, for example, only one side approach uh, is taken. And we see that this is not actually the, it doesn't lead to, to the best product ever. So um, it's, um, it brings with it, with it basically some limitations. So Sorry. if you tackle the, 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 the problems on, for example, only the functional approach. Okay, let's, let's, see, let's see what we produce as design developers if we don't involve designers. If this is your application, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I know some people build app for themselves, put it in a store, and it's free. The, both of these applications are free. Some try to get ads. So it's not a bad thing. But, but honestly, this is what we get. All the basic stuff is wrong. So this is another example that happens when you just have engineers. Um, yeah, well. The same applies the other way around, right? Exactly. So that's I, I called it more like aesthetic, not design, because for me design it's really like a deeper thinking. But like in this case, for example, if we take the only aesthetic approach, we might lead into you know nice UIs that we will post on dribbles, but then yeah, maybe there is not a deeper thought on, on the functionality of how these will be implemented, actually. Uh, a quick so question to the devs in the audience who see this, especially this part of this thing. What is the first thing you point out this problem with this one? Um, how does it render here or here? So this is one of the typical things that looks amazing, right? But, they, but the person who designed, designed this, draw this in Photoshop, didn't think how it will actually work. So designers can't work function in vacuum. We can't work in uh, function in vacuum. 
Uh, this is an amazing example of, <laughs> of how beautiful this one is patched when things, you know. This is actually, so this is happens, this literally happens when you, if you do waterfall with designers. They give you amazing, as concept works nice in, in laboratory, and then this, this is the patch by these developers on top of it. So yeah, so how do we kind of get out of, the, out of that? So um, I like to, this definition of design, that it's kind of problem solving within a set of constraints. So we can say, this apply also to, to development. So we can say that um, if the, the, the two fields come together and uh, they do it properly, actually the solu solution scope, so it's kind of uh, will increase, so we see that uh, the product will benefit. But if the two sides can start to pull in op opposite direction, direction then um, we have a problem, actually. Um, so, um, yeah, that's basically the, the, the main idea. You should try to merge the two aspects and not to pull the other way around. Okay, um, so now we explain a little bit what, we, what we're doing. And uh, this couple of pra practical tips, how we work together, how we get better. So this section, we, we talk a little bit about how you, what you should know as in your domain. So start from the user first. Yeah. So I think this is kind of the flag or the, the compass that uh, should lead us uh, in uh, every uh, phase of the project. Uh, we have been find ourselves several times to have, you know, uh, subjective assumption and so on, and then we say like, okay, wait, step, step, uh, wait, wait a minute, uh, which kind of problem are we going to solve, are we trying to solve, or uh, who is, uh, which is actually our user needs. So um, it's important that uh, the both all the roles, actually, designers, developers, product manager, they all align to the core user needs. And this will be very helpful like in later stage to, to take decisions and to avoid subjective decisions. Um, as soon as the direction in it's, uh, it's taken somehow, it's really important to validate those uh, assumptions as you, as you go on. Um, and so you, you can see that, okay, we thought this might work, let's see if, uh, uh, if actually it works uh, through user testing. Um, last point, of course, design pattern exists, so uh, there are solutions that have been tried several times already, and so I would say let's start from them, let's use them if it's possible and if it suits our, our user needs or Very our Very close to my heart if you know what I've been writing for the last couple of years. Um, yeah, so, but, so a couple of very practical things for, for developers in the audience. The couple of things about design field, what you need to know about, you don't need to dive very deeply, but you have to know about what they mean. Let's start for mental models. Uh, mental model is the one, the, the model the user forms in the head when they try to use your application. If that conflicts with the, with the model you built, the functional model, the user have, have, a, have a problem. So this is a very good way of thinking. There's a good book about this. Uh, we don't get any sponsor money, but we just like the book. <laughs> There's a couple of other books as well. I will tweet them afterwards so you can, uh, like, good ideas how to read. Uh, other ones is uh, personas, user-centered design, or use goal-driven design. Uh, again, there's a great book for this one, but think about the persona. Some people, when they see persona definitions, they think that waste of time is fun, people are picking pictures from the internet, but these actually very make, make it very useful. Uh, we can have an example later on how we used it. Um, quick time is short-term memory, how, how human short-term memory use, uh, works. We can remember about seven things, and we, we forget them very quickly. So if you have a menu structure that's more than seven, you probably cause a problem to the user. So understand how, how our brains work, at least a little bit. Um, do usability testing, you user testing. The, this is the eye-opening things what happens to you when you, you are certain that your application is amazing. Like you fall in love with your own work, then you put it in front even like a friendly audience, your friend or family, and they have no clue how your application works. Um, that's a problem. Here's an example of what happened actually in Berlin last year. Um, so this is a hotel bathroom. What happened? I opened the door and I said, there's no light. I switched this one on, some other light on. I switched it on, some other light. I switched this one on, some other light. I attacked these two. Nothing happens. I left. <laughs> okay, gonna be in dark. 
The next morning, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so think about the use context, the real context where people are using this. This spec is great, but it doesn't work in practice. Um, so it's your fault when the users make mistakes. Don't blame the user if the user has to, or if the user makes mistakes, you made a crappy UI. Know your stuff. Um, this is something that if okay, you have to understand, know your domain, you have to be a good programmer, you have to be, understand all of the stuff that has, goes to your work to be a good partner with your designer. Um, patterns, uh, understand, and for, especially for designers, uh, it's important that designers are ready to answer question why. When we as a developer don't understand something, what they put on the design, they have to understand, say, be ready to answer the why question. We've had design agencies we work together when, when we go and ask, OK, uh, we, uh, we don't think this works because these reasons. Uh, why did you design it this way? And they answer, because we designed it this way. And that's the end of discussion, and the product will be crap. Um, here's just a few things for devs. Um, if you don't know, you have to know every revi revision of support library. This is your main tool. But this is where all the design stuff goes now. Google is very design-driven. All of the design stuff goes here. Always read the latest reviews or releases. Always know exactly what is in there. Uh, know how to use GitHub. There's, if you look at the UI, there's half a million Android UI projects. 99% crap, but you know there's something in there as well. So know wh where to look for. Uh, know the components Google provides us for free. Um, know where to look for them. For designers, design guidelines, Android design guidelines, will allow them to design in a way that we can easily implement it. This is where the stuff flows into the support library and the design support library. Um, personally, this is for my recommendation to any designers, both designers in the audience. Um, Understand how the layout thing since works. Don't learn it, but understand how we as developers tackle the problem of scalable UI. It's different in Photoshop. It's just one screen size, especially if you still use Photoshop. Um, we have to figure out how to scale it. Talk to the de developers and understand what our problem space is. You don't have to learn how to use constraint layout, but understand that we're using. I suggest you would play around with the Android Studio and drag around things a little bit I test a little bit, but not too much. I'm not asking you to learn how to use Android Studio. But if you play around a little bit, you learn our problem space a little bit, and you can understand what we deal with. So it all of the knowledge of, of your domain, both design and developers, leads into this Foursquare. Um, what happens is that we as developers, we feed into this site, and the developers feed into this site. Now there's customer, we're going to talk about it later. But if you nothing take anything else out from this talk than this slide, that's all right. Um, so you want to talk about yeah, it? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, I think this kind of fits of what you mentioned already. Like, uh, if the de designer is able to understand the why, so for example, we, we have a solution that you know, it's really important for UX, uh, for the user experience, uh, but somehow it leads to a more complex implementation, then we might, you know, invest more time into it. Otherwise, we, if it falls in the nice to have, yeah, it's not w pretty, uh, let's say it's not worth it to spend that much time, and we can, or we can somehow reprioritize it. So this helps a lot also when you, when you are in the process itself to say, okay, Let's, uh, let's apply the right priorities to what we are doing, and let's check the cost, basically, mm -hmm. of the implementations. So in practice, this is what we always implement. This we never implement, unless we have a lot of money. Uh, this we implement if we have time. So the problem with this one is that you have to combine the knowledge of both discipline and good knowledge, not just you know, a little bit, to, to put things, features, in the right place in this one. So this is where core of us working together comes, comes together. All right. All right, let's move on. Workflow? <laughs> yeah, let's do some workflow. So this is how, how we work, right? Uh, we're not going to talk about Agile. I think this is enough. <laughs> you probably know what Agile means. Um, 
Well, we're going to talk about um, how we work and, and doing yeah. So basically, stepping early, it's a very important point because uh, I still believe that um, developers uh, and can bring a lot in the very early stage. So for two reasons, this would for sure uh, leads to a stronger ownership of the, of the project itself. And seconds, it can uh, help a lot in finding, you know, a corner case, a feasibility problem on a very early stage. And if we detect those uh, at the very beginning, of course, the cost of the implementation will drop um, after. Um, establish a close interaction, of course, it's, uh, it's something very important because uh, if we don't exchange fast, if we don't iterate fast, um, we will never manage to, to, to get to the end result. And uh, if we are not sure that that message uh, passed through, let's just, you know, repeat it and speak out loud because uh, uh, I think most of the time we underestimate the fact that somehow we speak a bit different languages, so it's not obvious uh, that we think the same way. Also, if you're a developer and you don't understand part of the design, ask, don't pretend you do, because you might cause a lot of problems in the project. Um, yeah, communication, basically. Um, but now we go to the stakeholder management. So we, uh, in our company, and um, I personally, I believe that everybody should always see all prototype, all versions of the code, all nightly builds accessible to everybody. Uh, but it leads a little bit in a problem, especially if you work with your customers a bit immature co company, they haven't really figured out what this stage are or they worked with huge consulting companies that just give them the end product, so they don't understand what a wireframe is, for example. Be very careful. Um, one thing that is helpful, try to type the feedback through one, one person, so there's one voice. Uh, we have customers where well, the emails come everywhere, you don't know who's who, and that's in, that just causes confusion. Um, it, Explain to people that this is not the final design we are proposing to them. Sometimes that's not clear. It's clear for us. Nobody wants this application on their phone. But for the customer, they might have a heart attack. They go, hey, we don't, our, our colors are not gray. I know. Um, do you have anything you want to add? No, I just want to say that it's very, very uh, important, and it's a good reach if we manage to establish with, with the customer uh, a path in which you know we work on prototypes instead of saying, okay, that's the final design, and uh, he can again give early feedback, mm. because uh, s yeah, most of the customer they're really focused on the business goals. And that's where uh, we have to make sure that the other two parts come together, so the, the user needs and, uh, and the technical constraint or feasibility. Yeah, so actually. this is the extension to the old one. So if we manage to push this part together in, in our team and expand the solution scope, we work together, it's easier to match the customer's business goals as well. So this is just adds a complication to the, the whole workflow. Yep. Priorities. Yeah, priorities. Uh, yeah, I think it helps a lot to to define uh, to actually to define where we want to focus on. Of course, there are always like new ideas coming, and this shouldn't re derail somehow the core or or the MVP. It's always better, you know, to launch with uh, MVP in time than uh, full launch the the full feature. Uh, product, but uh, I don't know, with uh, several months later uh, of delay. Um, customization cost, uh, I think this refers a bit to the... <laughs> That's most likely the, to patterns and the understanding of, of priorities. Again, if, if there's a certain thing, if we can, if we can build a toolbar in, in two minutes versus we build super custom header component in five days. Now we have to think about the priorities of these things that the custom components adds to us. So think about always the cost, um, the cost and time um, into the yeah, factor. Ac actually, we have an example later for that. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. again, uh, we might yeah. decide to, to build a custom header, but uh, we cannot do it until you know we are pretty sure that the structure and the behavior of that specific part works. You know, it's yeah. done. So it might be there. It's nice things, but let's keep it in the nice to have until we don't have the the core first. 
Um, yeah, Interact, basically, that's a uh, sum of what we said uh, so far. It's, uh, it's really important to keep um, a close uh, feedback loop and uh, try to avoid to be blocker for anyone. So you respond quick, as quickly as possible. Uh, be open to feedback and to change, because we might think mm -hmm. nof nothing is set in stone. Yeah. So let's really keep it uh, Absolutely. agile. Can I say that? Also, <laughs> this, is, this is quite an important part. So what we, I already mentioned that we pushed it to everybody. Uh, what we found, even with the inexperienced customer, um, if they have an application they can hold in their hands and install from the Play Store, just drop it to the Play Store alpha with the random package name. You never have to release it. Um, they will just they will get the feedback will be way better. The discussions will always be closer. If you saw a PowerPoint keynote presentation about your system, uh, they have no idea how the feedback is going to be. They they're going to be focusing on wrong things and so on. Uh, the live data. Uh, this is a good example. We had a customer here in Germany where we we built um, built a prototype. Uh, we thought our data looks quite cool. It uh, looks quite all right. We had hooked it in Firebase and filled in Firebase with, uh, with fake data, and it was all dynamic and all fun. Uh, then we hooked it into their system, and all the data was completely different, and it didn't work at all. So try to design or even prototype with live data, if possible. Of course, it's quite heavy cost sometimes. Yeah, there are also some interesting plugins that uh, you, know, you can drop the JSON yeah, directly yeah. And, and test immediately. So yeah, the next oh. one, uh, yeah, I think we can go a bit uh, faster on that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, uh, the workflow that uh, we often use. Uh, we start from, uh, from the um, discover or the investigation first, and while uh, still the approach is it still broads the, the development, can at this point already jump in with, uh, you know, doing some investigation mm -hmm. before we come to the next step, which is the definition. Uh, and here, uh, for example, the, the technical part can bring already a lot uh, of, of knowledge in this state. The other, the other, the other two parts, uh, of course, develop and, and deliver, uh, are where we actually built uh, the actual product. And as we see that uh, we get into details, the interaction loop has to be closer and closer. Um, it's really important as soon as we start to build that we step back, we test, we, we check, and then uh, we keep iterate uh, and, and refine, basically. And here it, where it comes the, the user validation. Okay. So, yeah. Tools, tools uh, can help, yes. So, I mean, there are a million tools out, out there. I think you mentioned Photoshop already <laughs> four times. I'm not using it since three or four years at least, maybe five, I don't know. But um, um, these are kind of two tools where we rely on uh, pretty heavily, uh, at least me. Uh, Sketch for uh, building the interface and uh, Zeppelin to communicate it to, uh, to, the, dev, uh, to the devs. So, if we go through, uh, I put some examples. So, for example, this is Sketch. Uh, here again, there are a lot of plugins and resources. This is the Material Design plugin. And uh, let's say we want to insert uh, very simple components like a dialogue. I can immediately drop it in, uh, change the text, uh, and, and generate it. Uh, and most of the uh, work has been done already, so I don't have to rebuild UI components every time. Once I have the, um, the component in place, uh, if we go to the next one, exactly, we, mi we might want to change it or customize it a bit, like, let's say, I don't know, uh, insert uh, uh, an icon uh, or change the header. In this case, it's, uh, it's really good and uh, to, to for example to the um, the symbols management uh, so sketch gives this possibility of uh, once you have your components and uh, you 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 have it the way you want it uh, you can immediately basically convert into a symbols uh, this will basically put this component in your uh, symbols page and from that moment on you have it ready every time you have to reuse it so in this case, for example, we call it dialog default. Uh, and this is really important for a couple of reasons. The first one is consistency. 
So for example, if I, if I access then my symbols page that, that I will see on the, there on the top right, you can click, I think you jump into that, exactly. My components, uh, it's now part of my design system, and as soon as I start to create new components, I can have a look at how my design si system is evolving, and in best case, uh, this will, um, will basically be consistent with uh, also uh, how the code uh, will be. Um, if we take a deeper look uh, at my component, uh, uh, it has inside already all the information I need to communicate. So the assets that uh, they will be generated uh, while exporting, and uh, for example, the textiles that I applied. If I select the, then the whole symbol, I can see that basically as, as I need to reuse it, I can just, you know, uh, change the, the text, the, ti the, the, the title as well, and swap the icon, and I have again uh, a component that is consistent with, uh, with, all, uh, with all the others in the, in the app itself, for example. Um, if we go further, ah, yeah, that's uh, another very cool uh, feature of Sketch is basically uh, the ability, it's completely ve vector-based, of course, and the ability to scale, uh, to, so you can set constraints and to scale it easily, the, the UI, and see how it, uh, it works on several resolutions. Um, so once our screen is ready, very basic one, uh, I just uh, press a shortcut, and from this moment on, you can switch to Zeppelin. Basically, Zeppelin, you have exactly the same uh, UI with all the information for, uh, that the devs need at this point. So, for example, you would have uh, the asset immediately downloadable in all the resolution or in SVG, um, in all the densities, and um, it keeps very important the same file nomenclature uh, of the asset. So, everything I have in, the, um, uh, in Sketch it will be the same in code, so we make sure that we don't swap uh, assets. Um, and uh, as well, the, um, the text style, so my dialogue title, and uh, all the information uh, below with the, um, with the XML that you can Yeah, so you can, you can drop this directly to your layout, and it will look exactly correct. All the, all the mar margins and all the layout beyond this one component you have to write yourself on top of that one. But this is a super fast way to do it. It even adds the tools tag here for the text so it will look correctly in the preview. Yeah. Another thing, of course, you can uh, easily post uh, comments um, and you will be notified immediately so you can update the UI. This is one of the most powerful communication tools when we do rapid iterations. I. If I need one of the assets that is not exportable, I need to change something a little bit, or PSC is some problem. Here you can add comment in right context, and its flow, in, it flow is correctly in there. Yep. So this is much more powerful than taking a screenshot, writing right on the screenshot, and then sending a screenshot, because this is already all in one place. Yep. And yeah, as soon as you update it, uh, you, would, you, you can even post a commit message, and uh, another important part is the style guide. So this is basically live style guide. As soon as I change stuff in, uh, in Sketch, it will be um, immediately um, updated here. So we'll always have the colors and the text styles in sync. Also, um, this is the Android resources. You can just drop this in your code. And, yeah. you have the same. and very last part, if you are using uh, other tools like Slack, for example, every time there is an update, you will receive a notification in your activity channel. This is very good for communicating to customer. Customer can just hook into this channel on Slack and see what's going on. Yep. So OK, we're a bit short of time. Yep. We have 10 minutes left. Uh, we wanted to talk about the showcase. So we built an application on Snap. We have this. Google-inspired 20 percent application, so we built apps just for ourselves. Uh, they're nice because you don't have to deal with customer because yourself. Uh, so we can just concentrate on building applications very fast and, and do vice. So I've, we taught how, to, how we applied all of these things there. So we actually, the way we start these applications every time, uh, we could take turn who wants to build their application. Uh, we built personas, and we built user guilds. So personas usually the first. Persona is always one of us, uh, maybe me. Um, uh, but we also go through personas that we don't focus on. So it's important to bring priorities on. So we build it for overbreed software engineers, these guys who are super fit, this application wasn't for them. 
Uh, we go through goals the same way. We write goals, we prioritize them three different layers or four different layers. Three is the MVP, has to have its two, 1.1, 1, 1 is 2.0, and zero we don't actually implement at all. And what is the benefit of this one is that we, the person who wants to build this application, can then pitch this idea based on the personas and the goals to the rest of the team. And we can communicate the idea to Pierre, who's going to be doing design, even if he's not been part of the initial process, without accidentally designing the UI. So you can describe your whole idea without doing any design, any sketching, any features, anything. And this gives the free hand ten to the designer to, to go on. And from this we go and start figuring out how it's going to be. So we're going to talk about, we, we take about a weekend usually to build the first version of the application, not ready for the store, but ready for distribution to our friends. Yeah. So this was the very starting point of the iteration. So we came together and we started to basically draft ideas and uh, somehow the information architecture of, uh, um, of the product itself. Um, and, uh, of course, this is a step counter, uh, which is a social uh, feature. So it was clear from the very beginning that we would have uh, invested a bit in this approach of having, you know, uh, your, your steps uh, in the um, primary, then secondary, your friends, and tertiary, your history. So I started to do some uh, design iteration. Uh, we took, as a reference, these uh, circle elements. And I started to try different variation. At this point, while I, I was doing this, you were basically doing that. This so is literally the first version <laughs> of the application. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we came to this point, and then we, we went again through the different variation, and we decided to drop basically the multi-line. We liked it a lot, but uh, you know, there were some downsides yeah. like scalability and so on. So we concentrated actually on that, and we decided to implement that as the first iterations. So this was already the first iterations, and we see that we had these two variations, uh, the total steps, and you could actually switch uh, to the goal. So you would see uh, the percentage of the goal reached and as well for your friends. This was a version that was done day two. So this was the still running on Firebase, but it was the first data I typed in there, but the idea was proof of concept day two. Yeah, so that was the second iteration already on the UI. We added the history, and then basically this was this was after, after two days. I so think. this was like three day three or so. Three. Um, this was a project that was done after work. So you know, I had one week, and then then it was the the day of the next day. And this one, this time the data was already hooked in. Everything worked as well. These are actually real users there, and we started giving it this to our friends. Yeah. and it became clear that people didn't understand this this share between these two things. And you know, we went back to our goals. Wasn't really, this feature wasn't really defined in the goals at all. And we thought, OK, well, you know, it's not an MVP. Why do we spend time figuring out how to make this work? Let's just drop it. So it's, it was gone immediately after trade day three. Yeah. But this was very, the, very user, the first user test we did, and we already could somehow take some uh, decision from that. So yeah. we actually uh, went back to the core. At this point, I was back in Berlin, so we, keep, we kept basically working uh, remote, but we used the Google Docs where I basically was posting UI, changing, UI changes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was open to comments. And basically, here we kept like thinking yeah. of uh, the next iterations. Uh, which was actually already, yeah, when we applied uh, the UI standard colors and so on. Yeah. Um, and then we realized that when we kind of got, uh, we nailed down the, the primary and the secondary information, we were not sure about this. So after other user tests, we decided to get rid of this element and we switched actually to a different one, which is. Uh, more understandable graph. Here, this was kind of technically challenging at the beginning. This was the first version. Uh, but we made it at the end, so. Um, yeah, here's what, what we mentioned before. So at the very end of the product, when all the core uh, was covered and the mo in most important cases were covered, then we decided, OK, let's add some uh, mm -hmm. final touches to it, where we inserted basically some uh, tool tips to welcome the user or to show to um, congrats the user when he reached his goals. And we also decided to have this 
animation so the header, which uh, I don't know yeah. how much you spent on that, but still, it's nice. nice to have. Too nice. OK, but you know, that was, it was on the store already. Um, so this is pretty much it. I will want to end with a couple of final thoughts. Um, learn from each other. We work together. There's a lot of things that it's worth understanding how designers work, how, how they deliver the stuff to us. For Designers have a lot to learn from us. If we work together, we're going to create some kick-ass things. Uh, just very good takeaways. This is the second to last slide. I know we're running short. Um, focus to the user. If you don't focus the user, you create something that nobody wants to use. Uh, early stage, start from beginning. The teams have to be working together from the day one. There's no such thing as developers going there first or designers going there first. Uh, workflow. We found a good workflow the first time we tried it. didn't work quite well. We try new ones and find new ones, iterate. Um, tools, find a good one. Zeppelin's awesome. I wish they would sponsor me, but they don't. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I love it. Um, respect and empathy, this is the last point. Respect the other part. They're doing the best they can. They're doing their work. Respect what they're doing. If you don't have empathy and respect to the other side of the team, you will create crap software. And I would say that's the most important point. Probably that's the most the, important point. Yeah. Thank that's you. It. Um, a couple of unfortunately, minutes. we I don't think we have time for questions, yeah, but well. I'm going to go to the GDG booth. If somebody wants to talk to us, I'm going to be here like five more minutes, then I have to go to Krakow. But then uh, see you later. And Thanks. thank you. Everybody.